what did you what what did you said you were gonna bring up in this episode? Oh, uh, hey, Fernie, did you know Chema has a favorite football team now? He does. Yeah. yeah. Get, guess who they are? Wait, football or American football, football? Football, American football. Oh no, who? They're one of the worst okay. teams currently playing in the NFL. The Browns? No. Fuck. The Browns are doing uh, good right now. Eh. Ish. Uh, it's the Browns, dude. Come on, the Jets. No, no, I'm not, not. I'm not even that stupid. Is it AFC or NFC? AFC. AFC? I should know that. <laughs> I don't know that. Oh. Uh, I think I should know. wait. I think no way. I think they're the end. Are they the NFC? I'm pretty sure they're the AFC. Oh fuck! Don't you know? Because <laughs> dude, they're not in my division. Oh yeah, they are the NFC. NFC South. That's all I'll tell you. NFC what? South. Before we continue, and the I'm Panthers? sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I root for the Panthers. Um, really? I want to ask. I-, I love how that's the first question I get asked. Um, <laughs> Before we continue, I want to answer that question with a question. Why does Fernie look like he's in a 90s music video? Dude, because like... this is the fucking <laughs> premier quality of a MacBook. That is why. <laughs> wow. That is the premier camera quality of a 2020 MacBook right there. <laughs> well, that's that's what Tim wanted, I guess. Um, that's why I paid 800 bucks for this goddamn laptop. <laughs> Jesus Was it worth Christ, it? my. Was it? Huh? Was what it worth it? I mean, yeah. I wanted a computer. <laughs> All right. Uh, I built my own PC and it costs less than 500 so I don't know. I'm just too... I don't have the time. Jesus. How the fuck did you build a PC and for less I don't than have 500 the space dollars? for a PC. <clears throat> I am not that picky. And uh, uh, I use it for editing. I use it for writing. I use it for games. So, yeah. Um... No, uh, since now we have the time to talk about things besides the strike now, um, I'll tell you the story. So I, I was tired of not having a team and uh, because I know nothing. I know next to nothing about football. And uh, so I said, you know what? I, I, I saw these guys do this on a podcast where they just uh, wrote the 32 teams on a piece of some paper, put them in a cup, shook them and took them one by one. And the last remaining one that was going to be their team. So I said, fuck it, I'll do that. And uh, I we got this on video. Like, I have this with my family. So I'm doing this, picking them one by one. And my family, my, my parents and my sister, they all root for different teams. So it's been pretty funny because uh, they all wanted me to root for their team. And little by little, had... Either the Raiders or the Cowboys. Uh, my mom for the Cowboys, but no Raiders. Um, oh. Is it because is it because we're Mexican? And, the, and those are the oh. teams we always yeah. No, yeah. The top, it is, two, it is the, true. top yeah. the top two teams for Mexicans is either Raiders or the Cowboys. It's true. Like it, I'm not even offended. Like it, it is the truth. Like um, uh, it's not. It's a. It is a true stereotype. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Truth relies on simplicity. And yeah. No, my mom does root for the Cowboys. My dad for the Ravens, and my sister for the uh, CLC Hawks. So well, that is just a clusterfuck of a household. It is. <laughs> So, anytime, oh anytime y'all teams play each other, is there like a fight that almost breaks out? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and this is this happens with every sport. Like they disagree on that. They disagree that on baseball. Uh, the only thing that they agree on is Mexican soccer. Like that's the only one where they all root for the same team. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so they all root that's for different. What fo- happens? Yeah, so they so they all root for different football teams. And I figured, like, fuck it, I'll just here's what I'll do. I'll pick out the team at random. And then that's the one that I'll sit down and study the lore and the history and the players. And like, I'll learn, I'll learn what's up because I know nothing. Like I know nothing about this. So I took them all down. So I put them all down and the last remaining one was the Carolina Panthers. And I figured, fuck it, this will be my team. And um, I started to sit down and like research this. And that's when I realized that I have no idea what the fuck a yard is. Like I, 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 I don't know because your your metric system is so backwards ass and stupid <laughs> that it makes no sense. Um, so I, I try to learn the terms. I know nothing. I don't understand it. I don't know why the game stops every seven seconds. Um, I, 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 Money, I, I that's don't. Why. I don't know <laughs> why why it's frowned upon for the players to celebrate too much, and and I don't know. 
uh, why are there so many killers of wives in this sport? Oh my it's, god! It's significantly less in soccer. I'll just say that. Hey, in soccer, that... you're not taking shots to the head from a fucking 260 yeah, pound for... linebacker trying yeah, to take your for head a off. Good reason. Um, so, anyways, I think so. While when I was learning stuff about my team, I realized that I was learning the wrong things. So when people started talking, so I figured when people will talk about football at work or at the office or somewhere, I'll be able to have something to contribute. But I was learning the wrong things. So they will be like, man, our linebacker sucks. And I'll be like, did you know that the Carolina Panthers, I'll I'll be like, did you know that the Carolina Panthers are the second youngest team in the league? And they'll be like, nobody gives a shit. And I'll and they'll be like, man, like that was a heck of a that was a heck of a quarter. And I'll be like, did you know that before every Panthers game, there's a big drum that they just bring out and start playing it? They're like, that's mm-hmm. fucking useless information. <laughs> and they'll be like, man, our you you lost the only good quarterback that you've ever had. Now it's in another team. Why don't why do you keep supporting them? And I'll go, did you know? that the Carolina Panthers were the first team in the league to have transsexual, to accept transsexual women into their cheerleaders. And they were like, yeah, they they are. Uh, And they were like, that is the most useless piece of information. Why are you learning this? This doesn't help at all in the sport. So I figured Wikipedia book. Yeah, it's like the only thing that you can really study without like love and time and everything. So here's what I do. The only thing I do to support the team is I follow their mascot on Instagram and I share posts of them every once in a while. And that's about it. So that's that's my undi- that's my report on the Panthers, uh, which apparently today they played against the Cowboys, uh, which Eddie was nice enough to tell me about. And he was nice enough to, to be like, you're going to lose. Your team fucking sucks. And I was like, you know what? I'm always rooting for the underdog. There's a good possibility that we may come out on top. And guess what? We did not. But you cannot say that we are not consistent. Hold so, on, hold on, hold on. I, I want context yes. in this, Freddie. I want context. I was not bullying Chema. <laughs> okay. I, when you, no, no, no. When he picked his team. <laughs> They were winless. They were 0-4 or 0-5. And I remember telling him, are you sure you don't want to repick? Because they are legitimately the only team without a win in the entire goddamn league. We have won. We beat the now Houston Texans. Do. Now you do. Like two months ago. God damn, you're yes. poor quarterback. You're poor yeah. quarterback. I don't know. I think yeah. Bryce Young sucks. I thought it was a horrible <laughs> idea to be like, hey, uh, we know that you've never played professional football before, but here's a whole franchise and carry it on your back or else you're going to die. And they traded away their one actual weapon in Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. One so, dude like gets them to eight and eight. Well, McCaffrey was going to die there if he didn't get out. <laughs> yeah. So also what happened is that I went to I went to Amazon and I looked up jerseys and I figured might as well buy a jersey. And I found out that they were extremely cheap because the one that I found for the Panthers was less than $25. And then I looked it up and apparently that's not the normal price for a football jersey. No, that's a fake. But no, it's real. It's got like the the, the sticker and everything. And so the funny thing is that apparently they had these on sale, like almost giving them away because nobody wanted them. So that's surprising. Yeah, so I think that's a good thing because, like, hey, I found a team and their merch is pretty cheap. So plus, I like I like the black and the blue. So I, don't I, know. I like their all... colors. Their colors are very reminiscent of the nineties. Um, yeah, but um, it was just a yeah very interesting pick. So that's uh, so that's that's how I've been football wise. Hey, they've been to a Super Bowl. They have. Yeah, yeah, they lost, but they quicker got there than with, with, the Cowboys uh, have in the last yes. twenty years. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Now I learned yeah. another fact that I can throw into people's faces. They lost to the Patriots. Oh, no, well, Broncos. No. no, the Patriots and the Broncos. Oh yeah, then both. Yeah. Oh, they've been there twice. Yeah. yeah. 
Heck yeah. And, and we, y'all never got the job done. I'm like, oh, if you cool. ever want a safe pick for a jersey, get a Steve Smith jersey. Who the fuck is that? Probably their greatest receiver ever. Or Cam uh, Newton, their greatest quarterback ever. No. No. Who was better than Cam Newton? Come on. Jack Del Home. He was Ooh. actually a threat in the, in the Super Bowl compared to Cam Newton, who wouldn't even dive on a football. I mean, the dude's the most – arguably, all the mobile quarterbacks now have Cam Newton to thank. Even RG3 can thank Cam Newton. Why? How long How long have RG3 been talking about like for Cam Newton? No, I'm sorry. Not for RG3. I, I, I regret that one. Wow, Eddie. A knee leg. Wow. Was that 2015 when he's – anyway, fucking way. How you long know, have we been talking about football? About um, 12 minutes. We should probably get to the – what movie you did, review. Chema. No, it's just that it's just that I don't think the um the 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 oh god what's the fucking word um the group of, of the democrat no the fuck what the fuck is the name of the word where like the group of people uh the uh the fans the community no yeah, I guess commu- let's go with community I I I forgot the word I don't think the community is between football and the Hunger Games. Like I don't th- if if there was a Venn diagram, I don't think it resembles a circle, you know. So it's it's gonna take us a bit to 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 win them back. So uh, oh. anyway, that was football talk. Somebody hit the intro. Hey everybody! Thank you for joining us for our review of. Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. This is the Rollback Podcast with me, Fernie. I'm Eddie. And I'm Chema. Let's get this podcast fucking going. Everyone hungers for something. 64 years before he becomes a tyrannical president of Pan Am, Coriolanus Snow sees a chance for a change in fortunes when he mentors Lucy Gray Baird, the female tribute for District 12. Now, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I, this is the first time that I've said the synopsis without stuttering. So uh, be- I believe I deserve a hand there. Um, so that is the new Hunger Games movie. It's a prequel. It's an adaptation of the same book, of the book of the same name called The Ballad of Songbirds and Snake by Suzanne Collins. This is directed by Francis Lawrence, who also directed uh, Hunger Games uh, 2, 3, and 4, or 3 Part 2. He was also the director of Constantine, I Am Legend, Red Sparrow, and Water for Elephants. And he brings, uh, again, a adaptation of The World of Pan Am. This is starring Tom Blith, Rachel Sigler, Hunter Schaefer, Jason Schwartzman, Peter Dinklage, Viola Davis, Jose Andres Rivera, and other colorful actors playing these characters. So Hunger Games prequel taking place of the 10th annual Hunger Games. They are in the need for not just new blood in the games, but also planning the games. And um, this is a book that came out in 2020. So I don't know if there's a record for fastest adaptation of something, but Jesus Christ, that was fast. Twilight? Twilight? So that came out in what, 2008? And the book came out in like, what, 2005? I think also, yeah, like three years, yeah. What wasn't Percy uh, Jackson? Then they didn't he pen the deal for the movie while he was still writing the book? That's pretty normal. Um, mm. yeah, that's pretty normal, but like, yeah, they can like, when you make a book, it. most of the time yeah. they're gonna start talking movie rights, yeah, because authors tend to make more money by selling those than by selling like the actual book. Um, yeah, I gotta write a book, yeah. Um, so yeah, we are diving back into the world of the Hunger Games with a new cast and uh, with a prequel storyline. Uh, pretty much a, a President Snow origin story, uh, which I don't know if it was well aware of that. I wasn't. I read the original books before the I knew came it was. out, <clears throat> but I never read this one. So, uh, yeah. What did y'all think of The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes? Ronnie, you can go first. Fuck, it was a long movie. Um. <laughs> I felt it. I fell asleep in the beginning. In the beginning? I, yeah. Before the games, I fell asleep. 
And then when the game started happening, I was like, oh, shit, action. Let's go. Granted, I was taking allergy medicine, so that could have been that could have been uh, a precursor. But, um, you know, I knew it was going to be about snow. I knew it was going to be about like something that he, he falls in love and and he's willing to throw it all away. I mean, we come to find out he no, he's not willing to throw it all away. As soon as he has one shot to get back in, he's like, let's kill this bitch. And he's just not a redeemable character. I don't get why they made a movie about this guy. He's he fucking sucks. What? You know, what's the joke I've been saying? Who the fuck wanted this? Because this is for hit. This is Hitler. Well, how are we supposed to root for young Hitler? It, no. Little Hitler. <laughs> He's such a scamp. Wait, nah, dude, what, you got the what the fuck the, was that? <laughs> you never seen the little Hitler sketch from Robot Chicken? <laughs> no. It actually explains World War II pretty well. Yeah, it, it, he's basically a school kid uh in a little kindergarten he's or whatever. Like, I want the little Polish's boy's desk. <laughs> and then when the teacher looks away, he takes it. <laughs> oh my and God. the teacher's like uh, little Hitler, where did you get all those deaths from? And he's like, I thought they know. gave them to me. And then they look at the USA, and he's there like drinking a Slurpee. And she's like, <laughs> USA, did you see what happened? Not my problem. And then the little <laughs> Japanese country comes and smacks him with a pie in the face, and he's like, now it's my problem. <laughs> and then yeah, little Hitler, he's such a scamp. <laughs> I love well. Him. Old school robot chicken. That shit. Jesus <laughs> Christ! No, I did not know about this. Robot um, chicken was a bomb diggity. Oh God! Uh, I think the only sketch that well, I've, I saw like several, but I think the one I remember the most is uh, the one where Seth Green, right? It's that's uh-huh. the guy. Uh, yeah. Where he's he, a main he, creator. He and it's him and another guy, right? Yeah. Who's the other guy? Yeah. So it's the two of them. They show up to this like vampire ass castle. Uh, mm-hmm. where Joss Whedon leaves and he's like hi Joss Whedon would you give us some money please for Robot Chicken and he's like sure since you left my fucking show yeah I'll give you some money fuck you <laughs> um, yeah yeah um, but yeah no, what the, yeah uh, uh, back to a pig- so. piggybacking on what Eddie said I just don't yeah. get why this fuck they were like of all the characters him Hamish would have been a better choice. Let yeah, I I've heard Hamish has a pretty awesome like game a uh, Hunger Game story. But like uh fucking snow. The thing is also yeah. like like how do you make him sympathetic cuz you know where he ends up. That's the problem with prequels. Unless you have a great story to tell. Like I'll f- I'll shit talk my own franchise for a minute here. Harry Potter love love the original films fantastic mm-hmm. beasts could have been better the third one it's like oh is dumbledore gonna survive bitch i know he does like like there's no tension in this fight because i know he wins i know he lives like how how are we supposed to cheer for snow i think the only way it could have been done is if they swap you know the part where he's a soldier take that part and put it at the beginning and like he had to be a soldier for four years it was a requirement, right? Conscription. He falls in love with this girl. He loses her. She gets caught in the Hunger Games thing. He volunteers to be her mentor. And they had to deal like, hey, if you live, we can sneak you out and we can run away together. But she dies in the Hunger Games. So he becomes a cold-blooded son of a bitch. There's your story on the silver fucking platter. God damn. I think, I think you both are focusing too much on what the movie isn't and not what the movie is. And oh, did you shit, like also... Well, let me let me fucking talk, okay? Uh, <laughs> I so here's the thing, I the movie never, never once asks you to empathize with snow, like uh-huh. it never does. Does it? Does it? Really? I feel like they from try. from they the beginning, he's a pompous asshole. Like, he, like he is poor among the rich. And he's trying to sh- to come off as richer than he is. And everyone can see through it. And he still maintains it. That's a pompous asshole worse because, like, how can you be get caught and still pretend? Like, that is not a character that you're supposed to empathize with or root for. 
he's kind of a vehicle and you're kind of just sitting in the back. You're not supposed to like want to like him. When now, before I saw this, uh-huh. I knew about this Lucy Gray character. I, I, I've heard her name before. I thought she was the main character, but then no, turns out it was a, a, a Snow um, uh, or origin story. Uh, never once in the movie did I felt like the movie was like, oh my god, don't you feel so bad for him? Like never, I never the, once. The tough part is just that you watch it and you're like. I feel like there was there wasn't really anything super significant that was like oh so this is why the Hunger Games is like is like how it yeah. is like there's really nothing that changed the game mm-hmm. like granted yes like because of Snow's ingenuity the Hunger Games becomes more um, sought after because it can be a reality TV show mm-hmm. but like. I just felt like there was nothing nothing too crazy about the movie that that, that you're like, oh, that's why it's like this. Mm-hmm. What's called she the, the Hunger Games doesn't give us anything that interesting or new. Like I where's the tension? Like, oh man, we're resistance. We're gonna start fighting them. We know they lose. They this goes on for another 64 years at least. Mm-hmm. It, we know the rules of the world, so give us a story within the confines that we can enjoy. Hey, Mitch would have been a perfect choice. Or yeah, the thing is rather... that, man, the, the, the thing is that, man, I'm sorry, but like the example that you just said of like rearranging it and putting the and putting things in different order and like having her die and like that. I've seen that movie. I've seen that movie five million times. Like name three like, of them. No, no, no. no. I'm kidding, okay, I'm look, kidding, I'm kidding, what I'm you just described is like I've seen that, and mm. what this movie does. Same thing with the book. The book was not trying to be like, oh, this is gonna shed some light. No, this was like, hey, you want to hear the story about the tenth about the tenth Hunger Games? Here it is. Nothing more, nothing less. You know, it was never supposed to be a big event. It was never supposed to like add anything more. I will say, I think if you sit down and you watch this one and then watch the rest, watching that crescendo like come down and up of like the last couple of movies when they reintroduce that song that Lucy is singing at the end of this one. Um, it would be like a nice, you know, start here and 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 end here moment, you know. Um, how 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 much do you think S- Snow's balls would have dropped when he heard the same song being sing again to him, like as an old man for an, from another woman that's gonna try to kill him, you know? Um, there is it adds a little bit of poetic justice behind. Outrageous. A uh, a uh, behind the main villain of the story, and uh, I think the movie is just there to like kind of flex and kind of show off the world. Because, uh, for example, what I really like is that we see how the Hunger Games look like in the future. It's kind of cool to see that while they're still futuristic, their tenth Hunger Games look very analog. You know, the TVs look look not like what they look like in the future, but it's still the future. You know, uh, yeah. it's got a very specific look. Uh, the way people dress is very specific. The world feels very large. Um, the fa- we can see the beginning of like that capital fashion. Um, I think the movie definitely has a distinct look, and it helps that it's the same director coming back to make this feel like it fits with the previous world. You know, uh, I like the aesthetic. I like the I, I, I like the characters. I really like their use of the constant use of red. In the in the district one in the in the in, in the capital, like we see it in their uniforms, we see it in Viola Davis's outfits all the time. Um, which, by the oh, way, Viola I, Davis credit, she was good. I'll, yeah, we should talk about this cast because uh, while there is Viola Davis, there is Jason Schwartzman, there is Peter Dinklage, you know, there is pretty well known people in there. The main leads, Tom Blith and Rachel Siegler, they're they're pretty much unknowns. Well, not, not unknowns, but like new people. Uh, this franchise is being carried by by them. There is their face on the poster, mm. and Tom Blith. I haven't seen him in anything else. I know he was in Robin Hood, and Rachel Ziegler. Well, she's been slowly coming up the ranks. She was in the West Side Story. She was in the Nisha Sam. She's gonna be Snow White. You know, the little by little, she's like coming up. 
Um, I like Hunter Schaefer. I liked her in Euphoria. I liked her in this. Um, yeah, this cast is pretty cool. Like it's uh like for a project like this, I think this is a pretty cool cast. I I feel like Peter Dinklage and Ella Davis are way too much for this. Like they're too good actors to be in this film. Why? I, they're so prestigious. Like and? Uh, they they play their parts. Al Pacino did well. Jack and Jill. That's fucking true. <laughs> yeah, he and he was too good for Jack and Jill. He was. Uh what well, and Al it was an Al Cappuccino. Well, what's the what's the commercial? Dunkachino. A Dunkachino? Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. And then what does he say after the commercial? Burn it. Bury it. No one sees this. Understand me? <laughs> um, Every, this do is you a think... perfectly fine franchise for them to do? Viola Davis yeah. also did Suicide Squad. She's not yeah. above doing a franchise. No, it's just like, are we getting, I don't know, man. I just didn't like this movie. What was wrong? Oh, 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 okay. Do you have, let do me, you let like me differentiate myself yeah. from Eddie right I think, now. I, I yeah. didn't hate this movie mm-hmm. before people started making assumptions. There was just, for me, it was just why center a story around snow. That's the only thing that I was like, meh. But for the most part, I didn't really hate the movie. I was just like, didn't it really have to be two and a half hours long? It they is could, they, long. Yeah, they could have cut off some fat. But other than that, I'm not on Eddie's boat. Eddie can fucking sink by himself for all I care. <laughs> but Eddie, you give your reason I, why I, you, I'm remembering now you why I don't like movie. why I don't like the Hunger Games movies. Now I'm remembering why. Why did uh, it make more money than Harry Potter at some point? And you're mad it about never, that? Or? It never had a chance. But no, no, the reason why is because now remember it's the same reason. If why it's something like stupid, Titanic. if it's something stupid, I'm gonna reach across the screen and slap you. Like if if it, <laughs> please make no, it make sense. I, no, no, I, I, no, I'm no, gonna get, per- no, no, get personal with you. I'm before with before you. we begin, if you look, look, Fernie said, I rarely agree with Fernie, and. <laughs> And when we did the Marvels episode, he said something that just clicked in the best way. It's, and he said, like, you have the strangest heels you want to die on. Like, and, and I, this is, his, st- this is his whole life, Chema. His whole life. <laughs> he always does this. If, if it's something to die on, it's he will discover something like if it's brand fucking new. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're all like, we've told you to watch this. And you and he rebuttals with, "Oh yeah, but I didn't want to watch it because I was I was too busy being an individual." Being what? I don't say it like that. I'm bullshit. I don't say it like that. What was that last like word? That, but he might as well say it like that. What was okay. that last word you said? An I'm individual. Just, He's individual. too busy being an individual. That's why. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. What is what? I remember guys, now. It, it's it's cool, stupid. Man. It's stupid, and you guys are gonna tell me that I need to learn how to separate myself, but it's hard to. There, to me, I remember now why I never liked the Hunger Games a lot. It was because it's the same reason why I don't like the Titanic. I I know it's a good movie, whatever, whatever. There's too much suffering in it, and I get it. I get it. There are movies you're supposed to separate yourself. Fine, whatever. For me, I just I don't like that suffering. I'm remembering now why I dislike the first one so much. It bothered me so much about how. People are starving. This injustice, Ugh, blah, blah, blah. and I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know how dumb that. That's sounds. what it sounds like. <laughs> I know how dumb that sounds, but I remember why don't I like the Hunger Games? Because they're up my fucking alley. It's not a reason of tribalism when it comes to like AEW and WWE or DC and Marvel. It's not that. I'm remembering now. It's because there was too much suffering. Like I didn't, I didn't like it, and I get it. Most people can watch it and not give a fuck. I just, I'm not good at that as separating the suffering sometimes there are other movies that i can watch where kids are getting murdered left and right like fucking thanksgiving and i don't care but for some reason it just bothered me at at like all these people that were starving i don't know i don't know why it just does it just did so now i remember why you know what's a negative outlook that's not that wild that's not that out there because like if you had i should be able to separate it i should be able to separate but i can't the the thing is that and i don't want to call you weak because that's not what i'm doing don't do it call them weak but here's the thing these are pg-13 rated movies they're not that out there i know i know i know it just 
the thought of someone being hungry bothers me. I remember being a kid and when my like going to certain areas and you saw people begging on the streets, you know, whatever money change, you saw how skinny they were, and that bothered me when I was a kid. And I remember when did you, when did you do this? Uh it was when we used to travel more to a certain area. Where? I, I don't want to stereotype it. What? Mexico? Yes. Why is it stereotyping? I don't want to. I it's an experience you had. I know, but I remember when my parents Granted, used to take me to... probably me. traumatized you more than it traumatized me, but... Yeah, it not. did. Be- well, because I saw these other kids, and I'm like, they're my age. Why are they... Where are their shoes? Why aren't they... And it bothered me. And it bothered me how skinny <clears throat> they were, and they were... You know, it just... It did. So, I remember now why I don't like the Hunger Games. It's because it reminds me of them and i get it it's a pg-13 movie you should be able to separate yourself sometimes i'm just not good at that i'm just being no and that's and that's totally fine you know i'm 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 willing to let that one that one go like it's honestly if you had said some bullshit like uh like uh no i don't like it because i would have survived and here's how i would have survived i would have been like i, I would have reached out a camera and like fucking slap you like that would have been <laughs> like like okay relax you know um yeah. i don't know like i have this thing with the hunger games that like I read the books before the movies came out. Like I read them because I followed other writers that I liked and they recommended them and I ended up liking them and stuff. Uh, so to me, it was a huge experience to like have read the book and seeing it on theaters and go, I went with friends and we all, we all, uh, we all got excited for it. And it was, it was a pretty good thing. And Fernie is posing. He's giving us his side huh? profile for some reason. Oh, and, it's because uh, I'm watching my guilty pleasure show. What's your guilty pleasure show? It's a show I hated in high school. I absolutely loathed this show in high school. I hated it. I hated oh, the people that watched it. And God help me why I find it interesting. Like I'm watching a documentary now. Jersey Shore. Oh, my you're God. Like, you're fucking watching Jersey Shore. Like if it was new. Yeah. So it's... No, Freddy. Why? He's hey, gonna I come actually at... like the family vacation one, especially now that they all mellowed out. <laughs> He's gonna come in next week, like it's fucking t-shirt time. God, like, I'm just gonna say this right. I Look. hated this show in high school. <laughs> hated it. I absolutely hated it. Like I hated when people would say the the sayings from the show, or you know, actually when she hated. when she got the spray tan like Snooky. I hated it, but now like older. Watch looking back at it, I'm like, why the fuck would Ronnie do this? <laughs> what are you doing? Wait, what season are you on? What season are you on? Two when they're in Miami. Are you look, like and- weirdly nostalgic for the 2000s? Is that, is look, that what that probably. is? Probably. <laughs> look, oh, look, look. Angela comes probably back. Probably why I watched One Tree Hill so many back. goddamn times. Why do you know about this? <laughs> Nick, Why do you know about this? Nick, Hi, Nick, Eddie. Nick, no, it's one of those things where Nick was watching like that's dumb. And then after a few episodes, I'm ah. like, wait, why is she doing this? Like, Jesus you ever Christ. get that where it's like your partner's watching something, and you're like, that's stupid. And then an hour yeah, later, Darian tries no watching way. Gilmore Girls, and I just shit all over it. Jesus Christ, what's wrong I, with Gilmore Girls? It's such a cozy little show. Like, first so- of all, Rory is a toxic <laughs> ass bitch. No, you know what she is, yeah. She, she is. is. We yeah. my my girlfriend finished the show, and I'm like, so she's not even a good person. She's a piece of shit. <laughs> Just because she's little and and talks quietly doesn't mean she's a good person. She's a fucking piece of shit. Well, well oh, this took the- almost like how Snow is a piece of shit. Do you see that segue? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um. Yeah. Very much appreciate that. Also, uh, Fernie is wearing a, a a backwards baseball hat, and he like lifted up for a second, and it's the first time that I've seen you not wearing a hat, and it freaked me the fuck out. Please put it back on. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um. That, all right. So what? I, I hate that I have to fucking actually comb my hair for my job. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I don't think you can show up with a backwards hat. It's not the nineties anymore. Um, Unless he's the coach, and even then, they might not let you get away with it. No, yeah, coaches, you can. Yeah, but coaches can get away with so much, as we yeah. know from you know not history. Fair. Yeah. So um, anyway, back to the Hunger Games. 
Um, I well, after I saw it, I texted Eddie and I told him, uh, "I think you're gonna hate this movie." And he said, "Why?" And he said, "Well, because they're singing in it." And well, we know the hill that he refu- that he refused to leave in the Marvels review. No, mm-hmm. I like so, this one. I like the singing in this one. The singing was good. Well, well, the thing is, is that I really got them. I had a whole argument. Oh, okay. You want to fight? Let's fight. Let's go. All there right. you go, Eddie. You ruined it. Let's yeah. Go. All right. Tell me. Tell me that you didn't like the singing. Okay. I, I hit me. I strongly disliked uh, the singing in this in this uh, film. Tell me that it was out of place. Rachel Zegler uh, is a horrible singer who has no. Pipes. You fucking take that back. That's not fucking true. <laughs> I said you know what I liked threw it, me you off fight? about Rachel Zegler in this movie? <laughs> the southern accent that she had. Yeah. It wasn't I was consistent like, throughout. I'm not trying to I was like, why the fuck does she have a southern accent? She, I get it. She's from 12. But did that accent just die? She's not from 12. She said oh, that she's she, not from 12. She she said I'm not from 12, but I got stuck in there. Like I, I was um, traveling with my with like my band. Oh, yeah. that makes we were sense. kind of we were forced to stay there. Yeah, that makes sense then. Yeah, I was like, no one else has a fucking accent. She's the only one. Yeah. Oh, the cubby. Um, That's what they're called. The cubby. The cubby. Yeah. Um. Well, my argument was gonna be, it's called the ballad. It's a ballad. Okay. It's a song. Like it's 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 in the title. Oh, okay. Yeah. Question. Did it yeah. throw? Oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Keep coming at me with the argument against uh, music. No, no, no! I am pro the music. Like I am, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm like, I always like. I hated the music. It's called the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. She's the songbird. He's the snake. It's in the title. Like, it's are you right sure there. she's not the snake? How? What did she do that was so snaky? So okay, here I, I have this question. This is a real dark take. Uh, not dark <laughs> take. A fucking hot take. Yeah. What? what? I don't know. I just feel like this is a real hot take. No, okay. Is that this... she's the snake, but let's keep going. How is no, she okay. the snake? <laughs> okay, question. Did it throw anyone off when they were in the cabin towards the end and all of a sudden they go from like happy go lucky, everything's gonna be fine to like here are the guns. Yeah. No. There are the guns. I mean, could no one see that fucking with a like I saw that coming with, with from a fucking mile away. Also, the movie's movie's almost three hours long. The pacing was going to lead us there eventually. I was like, oh, like everything's going great. Something bad's about to happen. Yeah. My big thing was that uh, when uh, in in the Hunger Games movies, when Katniss and Peta are selected to go into the games, they are told directly like, hey, only one person from District 12 has ever won before. And it's Hamish. And they show uh, Lucy winning. So I figured one of two things is going to happen. Either she was killed and they were just, they, they just, they, they just decided to ignore that she won at some point since she's not alive to coach them. Or she was, she was kind of erased from the pages of history because she won. I want to say it's the second one because it is the second one. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, snow quote unquote cheats so that she yeah. can win. Yeah. So the, they decide to like, kind of forget that she exists and uh they never answer explicitly if she survives i'm guessing she escaped she escaped and managed to like keep maintain herself in hiding for you know whatever whatever much time that she maintains herself alive mm-hmm. but uh yeah it's kind of tragic that like she is the winner but she just gets sent back home with like nothing and um that's it um hmm. It's a heck of an image, though, when she's uh, when she's about to get killed by the snakes, but then they they don't kill her, and she starts singing. That's a heck of an image, right there. Um, my main thing that I really like about um, about Lucy and about how Rachel Siegler played her is, uh, and I love this comparison that that someone else did, is uh, Katniss was. Uh, like a warrior, yeah. I said, Kenneth was a warrior that was forced to perform, and Lucy is a performer that is forced to be a warrior, yeah. And 
There's some she nice. She really doesn't do a lot of fighting in this movie. She does not. Like she never reaches for a weapon. The she kills that she someone. does. Yeah, the kills that she does are almost accidental. Like both with the water and with the powder. Um. How does yeah. she get the last kill? Oh yeah, the snakes. The snakes, snakes got him. Yeah. A yeah. rainbow of destruction. Yeah. Um. The, the 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 scene that I thought was really cool with the snakes was weirdly not that one, but it's when she Viola Davis has them in the huge jar, and she brings Snow and the other girl in, and they're like, "So who each of you wrote the uh, the essay?" And the other girl tries to take like credit right. for it. It's like, "Oh, great! Well, it's right there. Can you reach? Can you reach for it, please?" And like, it's such a good tense scene. I really like how they did that. Yeah. Oh, I'm just thinking to myself, like, why did you fucking lie, you dumbass? Because they're in college. College students lie. High school okay. students lie. I don't if if I cheated and the question and it comes down to either I let this potentially deadly venomous snake bite me and I die, or I tell the truth and I live, I'm telling the fucking truth. You know what, man? My bad. It was him. Sorry. And I walk away uh, with my with my shame. I walk away with shame. Yeah, but these are district ones. They their pride is all they have. Yeah, they do anything to win. Yeah, that's what rich that, that's rich people th- think. You know, you know. <laughs> did, any, did anyone else? So I got the feeling that they were trying to make us feel sympathetic for Snow at the beginning. Between his dad dying, between him saving food for his grandma and his sister. I'm sorry, his cousin. Who is dad a traitor? I oh, thought yeah, his dad died true. in the died in the woods. No. Yeah, not a traitor. He was a traitor. Oh, yeah. oh shit! There you go. He was leading uh, the rebellion. Yeah. Well, between his dad's death, between him like starving himself to feed everyone, between him like posing rich when he's actually, I felt like they were trying to get us to be sympathetic for Snow. I feel like that that's what they were legitimately trying to do. They were trying to make us feel for this guy who, and I said this in the video review. In theory, a guy who's trying to get his family back up the status. A guy who's trying to restore uh, their reputation, a guy who's trying to come up from nothing, who's dirt poor, trying to make money, who's trying to coach <laughs> the underdog. In theory, it's a guy that you'd root for, except he's Hitler. Like, like that does not compute there. Hitler. It's not compute. I'm, I'm, fuck. I don't know. I, 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 nev- I never felt... Uh empathy for her. like weirdly enough like i felt bad about her his cousin more than i felt bad about Dude, him i heard which, Oz in the, which in the I, theater which i really liked uh i really liked how uh she kind of ends up performing the finishing blow at the end like there's a there's a great scene where the two of them are talking and he says like do i look like my dad and she goes you look like him and you have a lot of his values but when you saw his eyes, all you saw was hate and anger. And then at the end of the movie, when he comes back and he brings him, you know, to live into his world again, she tells him, like, you, you look, look exactly, exactly like, your father. Father. like your father. Which is such a cutting line. That I'm so, honestly, even... I'm surprised that lady's still alive. Uh, oh, I yeah. Mean, first movie I remember her in was Four Brothers. I'm surprised she's still alive. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, that's right. She wasn't four brothers. I couldn't place her. Oh, and she was in Yes Man. Ugh. Oh yeah, she's the one that gives the the beach. The bee. That was a weird scene to see as a kid when I went to see that movie. Mm-hmm. I didn't get it, but wait, no, how old was I? I think I got it when I was a kid. It's like a suction cup. Yeah, yeah, I know it now. For me, but like, <laughs> well, <laughs> I was out- Eddie said, I don't get it. Not no, when I, I was didn't get like, it at the time. Wait, I was oh, like, no, I, I think you, I got I it. Thought I you still didn't get it. I don't know if I was like 13 or 14 or whatever when I saw it, but yeah. Um, But, yeah. Do we want another one of these? They're not going to make another one. There's not another book, so. I mean, the only one I would like to see is Haymitch, because I, I, I hear his story <laughs> is actually pretty cool. Um, But, yeah, there's no, there's nothing. As far as I know, there's no other book like in this development. Is, yeah, like this is just a one-time deal. This was just like an extra treat, like an epi- like not an epilogue, but like a prologue, like a dessert, like an extra thing just to the Hunger Games fans. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I think it works as a movie by itself. I really, I really do. We haven't even talked about Jason Schwartzman playing a uh, uh, lucky Flickerman, who's the announcer who just fucking steals the movie. It's fucking hilarious in this. Um, That's a very good uh, Tucci dupe. Yeah, he he plays very well. He, he looks like yeah. Tucci. The coin flip. Yeah, da, 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 yeah. Catches at the end. Yeah, like you generally believe like this is the father of the guy who's next, who's gonna host it next. So mm-hmm. it's good. It's a good. It's it's good there. Um, I am not taking this movie too seriously. Like I saw, like I knew that it was gonna be long. I knew it was gonna be uh fit the aesthetic of the Hunger Games. I'm surprised it came out as good as it came out, honestly. But I feel like uh, if you don't like the Hunger Games, you're not gonna like this one. It's not gonna do anything to yeah. dissuade you or change you. But if That's you me. do like the Hunger Games, it's a good extra treat. Um, I don't I like need another Games. one. Uh, me too. To me, they were really good movies. And I think people forget they were fucking huge. Like they were unstoppable. Like they were everywhere when they came out. Um, they pretty much kickstarted the whole teen dystopia thing that lasted for at least half the decade. And, it was the flat um, wave. One was franchise divergent. I feel like. The- one franchise yeah. I feel like does not get uh, the recognition it deserves is Maze Runner. Maze Runner, Runner was I pretty fun. I yeah. love yeah. the Maze Runner uh, trilogy. Awesome, very they fun to three? watch. Yeah, that that was it. They finished. Yeah, it? yeah. They did. Cut... The main guy got injured, right? They That's didn't. Where the last yeah. Yeah. They didn't yeah. cut the last movie into two parts. They did Good three movies. Yeah. That's where we got uh, uh, Adam Warlock and uh, the guy who plays Ferb and Phineas and Ferb and mm-hmm. and yeah and also Divergent uh, just completely shit the bed when it came to a friend. Yeah, but Divergent was kind of dead on arrival, honestly. Mm-hmm. But they never even did a last movie. They didn't even tell Cheyenne Woodley. They, just, they she found out when she got off a jet. Yeah, she got off no, the I jet. Mean, there's the worst ways to like, find out. Yeah. I've never found out that anything good. Coming out of my car, uh, if it fills out of a jet. Hey, maybe I would have taken it better. Yeah. yeah. Well, wait. I, What's I, I, uh, this is a time out, real quick. Eddie, delete this. Okay. Fuck. I'll be right back. Go. Go. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I mean, I like the Hunger Games. The only thing I just wasn't a fan <laughs> of is when they cut the last movie into two parts. Granted, I don't yeah. understand why they did it, but. I hated that fucking Harry Potter started that trend. Yeah, it made the first part feel very slow and irrelevant. And by it the just, time the second it was one so came out, wordy. Yeah, and by the time the second one came out, it's like, I mean, it's cool. Do you have a Do you have a favorite out of the four? Because my favorite is the second one. Uh, yeah, I would say the second one. I rewatched the first one, and I love the first one. But the second one feels like a like a more fleshed out version of the, the first, first one. one. Yeah. Cuz like the first one goes by really quickly. Yeah, like if, um when you rewatch it it goes by quick. And the second one is like a more <laughs> fleshed out version of it. I think the first one was the first time that I was I was getting into film like like I was getting really really into like the technicism and like the and like the specifics and everything, and the first one came out. I remember I watched it in theaters and I loved it, but then I saw like people talk about it and be, be like, oh, there's so much shaky cam and the the editing is so fast. Like it cuts it cuts every like four or five seconds, and I went I never noticed that. And then I rewatched it and I was like, I do see the shaky cam. I do see the mm-hmm. editing every four or five seconds. I never no- took notice of that. And now I can't not think about it, uh, which is a hard thing to do because I don't know how people just watch things so easily now. Like now I'm I'm constantly thinking about that. I will say the second one uh, has one of them. Nobody talks about this. Uh, the aspect ratio changes when Cadmus enters the games. Mm. And there's a great scene where she's in like this tube and she's being brought up. Oh, after and, they uh, fuck up, uh, what's his face? Lenny Kravitz, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a great scene where like she's in panic and she's being like taken upstairs, and the aspect ratio like opens up and it's a full screen now, and it's amazing. It's an incredible thing to see 
if you get to watch it in theaters, it's an amazing thing to see. And I uh, saw that one in theaters. I saw it with my dad. Yeah. Uh, also, that's also uh, I saw the second one, and they were doing like a double feature. So I saw the first one and the second one in theaters, like together. Um, which is, I think, it's the only time that I've done that. Like I that rewatching like the original one and then this one. Uh, yeah, the, the Mockingjay Part yeah. One was. It was okay. I mean, I'll still watch it every once in a while, but part two is a lot better because there it's just the payoff. Yeah. Um, I think s- somewhere by cutting off parts of both the first and second part, there's a really good movie in there. Mm-hmm. Um it's I'm just, sure I remember like watching an edit. I could could be. I remember like watching a scene in part one where she's about to record herself, like doing like a message to the people. And they spend so much time being like, okay, so I'll, do I look at the camera? Do I not look at the camera? And oh, I'm yeah, like, all the outtakes. Where she's and, like, up. I remember watching that and being like, like, can she fucking shoot something? Like, can she, can we, like, like, I know this is a criticism of, like, how we're obsessed with media and everything. And I can't believe I'm saying this while you're watching the fucking Jersey Shore. But, yeah, uh, he's not even listening anymore. Like, it's. Yeah, he's out, <laughs> out cold. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's that's how I view the original series. Uh, I like this one. I I I I I don't care. This is very clearly for the fans, and I'm a fan, so why not? I gave it four out of five. I had a I, I had a pretty good time. Uh, I knew it was going to be long, and they gave me so much. So I'm happy. Solid B. Yeah. Solid B. Eddie. C minus C plus. I'm never gonna watch it again. Yeah, that makes sense. That tricks. Um. Hopefully, what's his face? The tip. But Blith. Is his last name Blith? Tom Blith. Tom Blith. Yeah. Blith. Blith. Yeah. I think he has a good future ahead of him for what it's worth. I thought his performance was great. I think. He has a very small filmography. I think hopefully after this, maybe he'll get another run at another franchise. Maybe. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the rollback. Am I right? Yeah, it sounds yeah. good. Unless you want to like sit down here and talk about how uh, Nicholas Holt just got cast as um, Lex Luthor. Are you shitting me? Yeah, it's true. Hmm. You didn't see this? No. Yeah, he just got cast. What? You know what? That makes sense. How does he look bald? He spent so much time trying to be Superman and then trying to be Batman, and now he's Lex Luthor. It really he looks, is. He looks like Jax from uh, from Deadpool 3. Jesus Christ. Yeah, he looks like Lex, bald. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, that's right. He Max. was in Mad Max. There yeah. it is. Yeah. Okay, I think you know he'll what? do better than fucking Eisenberg. You can always do better than Eisenberg. And I say that as a fan of Eisenberg. I think he... Uh, the thing is with Heisen, with uh, Jesse Eisenberg, when he played Lex, they were going for the whole like tech boy billionaire bad guy Lex Luthor. And I was like, no, we just need an evil son of a bitch that we want dead. That's all we need. And look, if Holt can be like asshole-ish like he was in the menu, he'll do a good job. Oh, that's right. He was in the menu. I forgot about that. He was played the biggest idiot in the menu. It was so fun. Huh. If you can bring some of that, then sure. Let's fucking go. Oh, yeah. He was in Renfield. I liked Renfield. Yeah. He's Renfield. <laughs> I like Renfield. Okay. Fair enough. I forgot that Renfield was the thing, even. He was also Beast. Yeah, he's not coming back. It's Hat McCoy. Well, we know that already. <laughs> They needed an older Hank McCoy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kelsey Grammer is right there. He can do it. Um, right. So that's that's all I wanted to bring up. Um, next week. What are we doing next week? Huh, what what comes out this Friday? Um, I feel like there's a movie. Let's see. Movie premieres. It's not. A- uh, Napoleon came out uh, to tomorrow comes out you're tomorrow. right you're right napoleon is coming out um, you want you want to do napoleon or, uh, dude we could do trolls i'm uh, finally gonna see the leonardo dicaprio movie t- 
tomorrow. Oh, the killer, Killers of the Flower Moon. I haven't seen it yet because all the showings start at like 8 or 9 p.m. and it's a three and a half hour movie. Oh, fuck that. The only reason I'm seeing it tomorrow is because the showing's at 11.40. Oh, man. Good 11.40 luck, p.m.? No, a.m. Oh, that yeah, that's better. That's uh, cool. Fuck that. I don't want to spend my night being like, I'm going to watch this three and a half hour movie. The thing with uh, both Killers of the Flower Moon and Napoleon is that they're both made by Apple TV and it's going to be on Apple TV later. So I'm like heavily considering skipping the theater just to watch it at home so I can pause it and like go to the restaurant. I wanted to do that, but my sister wants to watch it. Oh, well. You're a good man, Bernie. Yeah. Um, We'll see. uh, Worst case scenario, we do Scott Pilgrim. You know, since it came out also on Friday. Uh, um, I'm also watching Godzilla next week. Woo! Wait, Godzilla. which one? Zero? Oh, the Godzilla new one? Mi- minus, minus one. Minus zero? Oh, minus one, yeah. Yeah. Woo! There's no bad guy in it, right? Huh? There's no, like, monster in it, right? Yeah, minus Godzilla. one? Yeah, it's just Godzilla. But they scaled him down, dude. He's one-third of the size of the one from Legendary. Oh. Like they because they want to make him like a mo- they want to make it like almost a borderline horror movie. Like Godzilla. It would have been funny monster. if you if you would have said no, there is no monster except for us. We are the monsters. No, in this one, clearly he is the monster. But yeah, that's I thought, I thought Godzilla was I thought Godzilla was female. That's the nineteen ninety eight Godzilla. So I'm Gemma, not wrong. Gemma, I will drown you. Am I not wrong? Hey, I like the 1998 Godzilla. He was asexual. I think asexual is different from gender. I believe that's like no, but like sexual preference. No, but they said like uh, he reproduces asexually. That's Nick Tatopoulos' actual words. Well, no wonder that movie was stupid. Um, Also, Nick Tatopoulos still stupid. Don't say that. No, like I'm. I love that movie. It's a guilty Uh, pleasure. I, well, I, for I, me, I, I still love watching that movie when it's raining outside. You can't uh, say that and have Jersey Shore playing in the background, and then it is him, a and then, it is a and then being like on humans, and then being like, "Don't call my movie stupid." Like, exactly. <laughs> That's called. Cool. Cool. I have oh, rain. Yeah, we'll out. Okay, yeah. gentlemen. Any All right. else? I business. believe that should cover everything. Thank Solid you so much B. for joining us. Four, yeah. four out of five. Four out of five. Eddie said C. C. Eddie negative. Hates everything negative that's C. good in this world. Yeah. Um, yeah. If if fucking Aquaman 2 comes out and it's terrible and you sit here and be like, yo, it's a 10 out of 10. <laughs> it. Will, uh, come I'm on, guys. It was crazy. That bad. I'm going to go crazy, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, All right. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. Outro. Yeah. Hey, everybody, thank you for joining us for our review of Hunger Games Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Please check us out wherever you get your podcast needs Google, Spotify, Apple, everywhere you get your podcast needs. That is where we are. On YouTube, we do put out the 11 count. So please check us out there. We put out an episode every couple of weeks. Uh, but yeah, thank you for joining us for our review of Hunger Games Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I'm Fernie. I've been Eddie. And I've been Chema. Let's cut it. Bitchin'. All right.